So first of all, I want to talk to you a little bit about my journey and what I did to lose weight. So one of the things that I did was intermittent fasting. Now, this isn't the entire piece of it. So what is intermittent fasting. It's a pattern of eating where you restrict the hours that you eat. And so in my book, you open your eating window when you consume your very first meal or snack of the day and you close your eating window after your very last calorie is consumed. So there's no magic number of hours that someone should be eating. So some people should be doing eight hours, six hours. I know lots of people who lose weight on six hours. Some people lose weight on eight hours. Some people only lose weight if they only eat one meal a day. So don't stress out over it, but um, you have to figure out what works for you. So let me talk about some of the benefits of fasting. Some of the benefits of intermittent fasting is that it helps you lose weight, it helps burn belly fat, it reduces insulin resistance, it helps with autoimmune diseases, it helps your gut, There's so many amazing things that it does. So if you want some more accountability and you want some more coaching, you can get that at, you can go to ChantelRayway.com slash coaching and get that um, for you. Now, one of the things I talk about is to never eat past four on the hunger scale. So I I recommend your first meal to be on a, level one on your eating scale. So let's talk about um, which one you need to be on. So I talk about something called the um, ham- being hamster hungry. And so hamster hungry is you're starving, you're ravenous, you're weak, you're grouchy, and all you can think about is what you're going to eat. And so the term hamster hungry comes from a friend of mine. So she went out of town for an extended period of time and she literally came home, she forgot to feed it, and the hamster had babies and the hamster eat, had eaten our babies. And I know that sounds disgusting and that's really gross. Um, so, but that's what I call being really hungry. Like you just want to eat everything in town. Um, but this is where I recommend that you actually start eating, which is at a number one, level one on the hunger scale, which your stomach is growling. So you... At this level, you're, you have an empty stomach, you can physically hear your stomach growling, and it's important that you um, make sure that it's the right kind of stomach growling. So for example, what that means is, is that like I could eat a full meal and hear my stomach growl, right? Like if you do that, that's just your body like growling to, to break up the food. There's a complete difference. When your stomach gets fully empty, that's when you are looking to eat and you the gases produce and that creates a stomach growl. So there's, there's something different about that. Now, level two is that you're hungry. You're starting to think about food. You know, things start feeling good as far as everything is, you're craving all kinds of different things. Um, so level three is you're not hungry. You're not full. This is a neutral place. Like you sense there's some food in your stomach. Um, but you, your stomach feels comfortable. A level four is you're satisfied and full. Like you're, you might want to eat more, but you shouldn't. So with this, I suggest when you first start that you stop eating at a level 3.7. So what that means is when you are really hungry, um, you're going to want to keep eating. But no, you're going to stop it when you're at a level 3.7, 3.8 because it takes about 20 minutes to feel like you're full. And in the beginning, when you start fasting, what's going to happen is you're going to stop eating at maybe a 4.5, 4.3, but you've got to bring it down to a level four. So on the hunger scale, five is stuffed. This is where you're uncomfortably full. You're getting tired because your body is using all of its energy to digest its food. You might want to take a nap. You might need to uncouple. Um, buckle your belt. When you get to a level four, you should not be tired. When you finish eating, you should not be tired. If you 
If you are tired, that means you ate too much and your body is taking all of its energy to digest its food. Now, you want to be at a level one at stomach growling when you eat your first meal of the day. That is very, very important. You don't have to wait for your stomach to growl. You can get to a level two at your second meal if you decide to eat two meals a day. But I recommend that you never, ever, ever under any circumstance eat past a level four um, and even to a 4.2. Okay, now, like we said, it takes about 20 minutes for your stomach to tell your brain that it's full. And this is a real struggle for me because one of my principles in my book is to slow down when you're eating. And I will tell you still to this day, there's one thing that I do not do well, and that is eat slow. But I remember I told you, I interviewed over a thousand women and this is what they do. They eat really slow. This is one area I still really struggle with. So number one, the first thing you can do is to pray before you eat. Um, Psalm 8110 says, I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. And so what you're going to say is this, this is a great verse to say two different times. One, before you eat and after you eat. So not before, I'm saying before, like when you're not hungry. So like if I'm not hungry, and, but I'm just stressed and I want to run to the refrigerator, this is what I pray. I'm like, God, I am really just so stressed out right now. The thing that would make me feel so much better is to run to the fridge and go get brownies. Um, so, but I have to say, God, you know, I know that you say in your word in 80, Psalm 81.10, I'm the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. And so I pray that when I'm not supposed to be eating, when I'm truly hungry. And then number two is to take a break. Um, you know, sometimes like if I feel like I'm just starting to get ravenous, I'll just like go to the bathroom. I'm like, I've got to just go to the bathroom and pray, or I'll just go get a drink, or I'll ask anyone at the table, like my family, does anyone need anything? Inevitably, someone will be like, oh, I need this, or I need that, but... Like my friends used to tease me all the time for not even taking a breath when I ate. Like you just don't want to be like that. Number three is using a fork and knife. Like you need to eat your meals with utensils um, so you can cut your food up in really small bites because like me, because I eat so fast, I need to cut my food up into really small bites so that will help the digestion process. When you're digesting your food, it's... In the beginning, you want to make sure that you are cutting that food up because even if you're eating a little bit faster, your digestion starts with your mouth. Number four is to dissect your food. Um, my thin friends literally pick apart their food. Um, they like will take like if for chocolate mousse for example like I love the whipped cream but I don't really care for the crust at the bottom so I'll barely skim the edge of the meringue with the whipped cream and I'll just kind of sliver it on the top and um, one of my friends when I was with her I saw her eating sushi and literally she would take the little bits of the top of the sesame seeds or like rip things apart I mean they literally if you watch them they dissect their food and they savor every flavor. Um, so um, one of the things that you want to do is you want to ask yourself, where were you on the hunger scale when you sat down for your last meal? And where were you on the hunger scale when you ended your, your eating? So one of the things that you should do, another Chantal Ray Way rule, is to eat the best first. So you want to think about the plate on your food. Like, let's say you have broccoli, mashed potatoes, and steak. Someone who's a thin eater, they're probably going to be like, let me start with the broccoli or the salad and just get that out of the way and save the best for last. But that is not what you want to do. A thin eater is going to try a small bite of everything on their plate and whatever they like most. So they're going to start with that first. So maybe you really like the steak at first. That's what you need to start with. Or maybe it's the potatoes. When you start with the food, you want to start with things that you really, really enjoy. 
so you won't be tempted to finish off the plate of things that are you're not your absolute favorite. So thin eaters, they eat only what they really, really love. And I've interviewed a ton of thin eaters and they actually taste and rate each food that's on their plate. The average thin eater tastes something that she doesn't eat and and just eats it anyway, right? Like if I didn't love it before, I would just eat it anyway because I was part of the clean my plate club. I would just be like, and I would just eat everything in sight. You don't want to be a member of the clean your plate club. Now, let's, um, this is just a review of the hunger scale one more time. So as you can see, like zero, one, two, three, four, five, here is the hunger scale. Remember, you want to start eating at a level one for your first meal and always make sure you're either at a one or a two when you're eating. Um, and you never want to get past a level four. So stop and ask yourself when it comes to your dinner plate, am I eating the best first or am I saving the best last person? Try to commit to being eating the best first. Now, one of the other rules that I have is a three bite rule. So like I've discovered for me, the magic number for me is to have decadent, when I eat decadent foods, is I only want to take three bites and maximum two times a day. So like if you look at these thin eaters, what they do is they'll have one bite, two bites, maximum three bites, and then they just push it away. So um, when you cut out an entire food group and limit the amount of calories you consume, you really have to rely on your willpower to succeed. And some at some point, your willpower kind of gives up. And so anytime I go the route of completely banning a particular food from my diet, I literally just go crazy and I just start losing my willpower. And one day I just explode and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to eat all the bread I can have or all the chocolate I can have because I haven't had any of it. So I've just discovered if I just have a couple bites, then I'm, I'm able to have it and I can push it away. And I never ban myself from eating any particular food, um, but I have those three small bites and it, it satisfies my craving. Now, um, I go into more detail on all of this stuff on my podcast. If you haven't gone to my podcast, make sure that you do that. Um, you can find it on each, uh, iTunes, or if you have an Android, go to ChantelRayWay.com and you'll click on podcast there. So once again, if you don't have any physical ailments, you can eat whatever your body cra craves. Like I have tons of skinny friends who eat whatever they want all the time because they, they fast and they still maintain to lose weight. Um, I have one of my skinny friends, she literally weighs a hundred pounds and she drinks like one or two sodas a day. But she only eats one meal a day and she never overeats. But I believe that the Bible also says in Proverbs 25, 16, if you find honey, eat just enough. Don't eat too much or you will vomit. So what is your most favorite decadent food? Next time you're craving it, try to just have three bites. Okay. Our next biblical principle is to fast on a regular basis. So all over the Bible, it talks about fasting. Fasting is mentioned in scripture um, in some form over 70 times. And so um, Matthew 6, 16 says, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do. So notice in Matthew 6, 16 that it says, Jesus says, when you fast. Um, it's important to know that fasting doesn't move God. It moves you closer to God and it just makes things clearer. So when you eliminate food, your spirit becomes uncluttered and you're more tuned in. It's like an antenna. It's like turning the dial and getting a real frequency, clearer frequency. So let me give you an example that I give all the time of what fasting does for you. So fasting is like, it's like scuba diving. So like I live in Virginia Beach and if if you have been in Virginia Beach any time, um, you see that our water is not crystal blue just like everywhere else. And um, it is black almost, like it's like a dark, dirty brown. And so what happens is, is when you go scuba diving though and you put on the glasses and you put on the gear and you start going underwater, the fish become clear, everything starts becoming really, really clear. And so... 
what you want to do, oh, that's what that's what fasting does. It makes it just like scuba diving. It makes it super, super clear. Um, yeah, all of a sudden you can see the color of the fish and the coral and everything comes clear. So when you fast, um, here's a prayer that you can pay, pray because it is difficult. Um, but Colossians 3.16 says, let the message about Christ in all its fullness, richness fill your lives. And so you could memorize that verse and you should just say, you know, God, you say in your word in Colossians 3.16 that I should be filled with your words. And that's what I'm asking right now. Fill me up with your words from my head to my toes. Now, back to what we said, the biblical principle is to limit sugar intake. We saw that it says, the Bible says, do not eat, eat too much honey or it will make you sick. It's very important that your body, you understand, your body can be in two different modes at any time. You're going to either be in fat burning or sugar burning. Now, you have to be, you want to be in fat burning in order to lose weight. And the ultimate goal is to create a system of eating where you're consistently in a fat burning state without cutting all the sugar out of your diet. So a lot of times people are doing these keto diets, but it's very difficult to, to live on. And I've seen people be in keto diets and still not losing weight because as soon as you eat food, it doesn't matter if it's low carb or not, the storage hormone called insulin starts to rise and it signals the cells in your body to absorb glucose. So when we stop eating altogether, AKA fasting, insulin levels fall and after so many hours of fasting we use up all that sugar and we switch over from fat burning into um instead of sugar burning into fat burning let's talk about this for just a second so you know carbs come from breads fruits vegetables everyone knows that fats comes from dairy nuts fatty vegetables like avocados and so your digestive system breaks down each food and basically sends it to your bloodstream and your blood uses insulin to process the sugar from the carbs that you eat so the amount of insulin your body creates really depends on how much sugar you're taking in so when you hear the word sugar you might be visualizing table sugar, but sugar also comes from the breakdown of carbs. So when I eat a meal that's high in sugar, I immediately crave a snack afterwards. Like my family jokes me because like when I eat a super high carb meal, I might be full and then I'm, I go in the pantry. My family has literally locked the pantry like with a lock. Um, and because I would be full, but I was like, I need something sweet. I need something sweet because I let my blood sugar get so high. So let's talk about how your body processes fuel. So when your body has a lot of sugar to burn, it's going to burn that instead of going into the fat. So your fat is like the bank and your sugar is like the in your pocket. So let me give you an example. Let's say that you said, I'm not gonna use credit cards anymore. I'm only going to use cash, right? So when you use cash, um, let's say you only have it in two places. You have it inside your pocket or you have it at the bank. Now, what happens is, is if you want, let's say you had a hundred dollars in your pocket and let's say that you needed to buy something for $50. Are you going to go to the bank or are you going to just go in your pocket and reach out $50? Of course, you're going to go right in your pocket, right? Same thing with your body. Your body can either go to the sugar, which is so easy for it to access, or it could go all the way to the bank. So the that is the best analogy for me to explain it. Now, another example of this is a hybrid car. So some hybrids use only electricity for fuel until there's none left. At that point, it switches over to gas consumption to keep it going. That's what it's like in the human body. You want to use up all that sugar to get into the fat because that's what it's going to result in weight loss. Your body won't bother going to its fat stores for fuel when there's plenty of sugar present. So when you start to fast, your body is burning only sugar at first. After, you know, 16 hours, 18 hours, 24 hours, depending on what you ate from your last meal, it forces your body to get energy from your fat. And that's the key. So 
let's talk about what can you drink when you fast. So in the beginning, I suggest only unsweet tea, black coffee, water, or if you really want apple cider vinegar, <laughs> it's disgusting. I can't stand apple cider vinegar, but it does have, I think it does help you curb your sugar appetite, but any of those are great. Now, this I don't recommend, but if you say the only way I can do this is if I have diet soda or diet vitamin water or fa flavored LaCroix or Crystal Light, I'll say I don't like it because those are like the Crystal Lights filled with chemicals. Diet soda is so bad for you. Do I want you drinking it? No. But if you go, this is the only way I can do it, I'll say fine, go ahead and do it. Now, this is like, this goes into levels, right? So like clean is best, then okay, I don't love it, but if the only way you're going to do it is this. Then another one is crutch. Some people say, look, I have to have, with my coffee, I have to have heavy cream or half and half or unsweetened almond milk. I say, okay. Or some people go, look, I can't go that long. I need to have like some bone broth or unsweetened coconut milk with my coffee, or I need to have some like a couple of lemons with my water to make it through, I go, okay, I don't love it, but I'll take it. Now, no, you cannot have fruit juice, coconut water, milk, alcohol. Those are a no, okay? Just a no. The coconut water, I'm going to put that one in between the crutch and the no. It has so much sugar, so like you can't really count that you're in a fasted state when you're drinking that sugar. Um, but if I go on a longer fast, like a couple days, like three day fast, sometimes I'll have a little bit of coconut water to make it through. This is what I wanted to tell you about the thin eaters that I needed you guys to watch. So remember I told you, I interviewed over a thousand women and here's what I did. I even videoed some. So check this out. What do you do to keep your, keep eating slow? I try to really enjoy every bite. That's why I don't eat, I eat only things that taste really good, so I'm like, oh, this is delicious. You know, it's like you eat to enjoy the experience. So what made you decide to get that salad today? I actually like eating salads, but I like them to be good. Like, I like them to have crunch. I like them to have meat. I like a cheese. Do you think you follow the 80-20 principle, like 80% of what you eat is fruits, vegetables, whole foods, blah, 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 and then 20% is just anything you want? Probably that, but I don't focus on doing right, it that way. Right, you don't focus on it. I just, it just happens to be that right. way. Right, that's the key. How much of that salad do you think you're gonna eat? Probably like half of what's left. If you had to estimate how many calories you eat in a day, you wouldn't be able to do it, would you? I would say between 1,500 and 2,000 2, calories a day. And you pretty much have two meals per day? Every time. And you never eat breakfast. And I try to work out like 20 to 30 minutes, like three to five times a week. Not every day, I mean, but. How often would you say you eat the entire plate of food? Like, I won't eat this whole plate of food because it's a huge salad. Well, this here is just amazing. I know. And if people were like counting calories, they'd be like, oh no. Yeah. Cream and gorgonzola cheese. Um, yeah. It's about not feeling deprived, you know? Yeah, it's the number one thing. And are you still enjoying your salad or do you want to take a box? I'm finished. You are? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, next biblical principle is to focus on real food. Like, try to eat something that God has made. Now, when I'm trying to be perfect and eating, being obsessive with dieting, I don't try to do that, but I do try to make sure that I'm focusing on real food. Um, in my book, I reference the 80-20 principle. Um, another thing I talk about is if you have thyroid issues, you might have to eat cleaner. Um, but I feel my absolute best when I'm eating clean, and that's for me as a diet of 
um, meat, fruits, non-starchy vegetables, nuts, seeds, and so forth. And I don't eat a lot of grains, dairy, beans, sugar, or processed oils, um, but I do eat it in my 20%. And so 20% is literally whatever I want. Um, and so I know you're probably asking like, why should I not eat clean 100% of the time? Um, I know that if I did that, I would feel absolutely fantastic. But the problem is, is that that's not sustainable. For me, if I really am dying for nachos, I'm going to have nachos. Or if I'm dying for this, that, and the other, I will have it. So whatever my body is really, really craving at the time, I do not deprive myself because I have learned that when I deprive myself, I'll end up going on a binge. Now, one thing that I want to kind of show you is that I use a term called chemical city. So it's a phrase that I use around my home to describe the foods that I think are loaded with chemicals and are way unhealthy for you. So if my son asks for something that I think that crosses the line, I'm like, no way, that's chemical city. These are foods that I absolutely try to avoid. Um, one thing that I do have sometimes in my creamer, but this is really just like, ugh, when I think about how terrible this is, I wish I had the ingredients here for this uh, coffee creamer. But if you Google like ingredients into coffee creamer, mate, it is terrible. So I will post those on my Facebook wall, but it's basically like high fructose corn syrup, um, di dipotassium phosphate, mono and diglycerides, sodium. It's just like, you can't even pronounce the ingredients. It's so bad. I just, I'm like, why would you put that in your body? Um, let's talk about bread. So like, do you know that almost 500 foods contain the yoga mat compound? Um, it's called, I can't even pronounce it. It's called azodicarbonamide. And it's found in close to 500 food products from Pillsbury Dinner Rolls to Little Debbie products to Wonder Bread. Um, my husband used to joke me. He would say like, if you want Chantel to just literally go to sleep, give her a piece of Wonder Bread. Um, because I just, if I ate a piece of Wonder Bread, I would literally just be down for the count. And it's no wonder why. Because you're literally eating a piece of yoga mat. And it's like... Why in the world would they allow the same yoga mount compound? Why do you think that bread lasts for like 10 days? Bread shouldn't be lasting for 10 days. That's why. It's because they put all these chemicals in it. So the whole premise of my book is not to obsess over food, but I still encourage you to read the labels of all your foods and just make sure that if there are chemicals that you cannot pronounce, you need to find some healthy substitutes like perfect example is almond milk did you know if you buy almond milk you need to go onto my web onto my facebook page and learn how i make homemade almond milk it's so easy it takes two seconds why would you take almond milk that has all those chemicals you know i went to starbucks the other day and um i was like I'll, I really needed some co some coffee. I was fasting and I was like, I need some coffee with coconut milk. And I was like, I just was on a longer fast. I think I was like on a two or three day fast. And so I went there and I was like, can I see the ingredients for your coconut or your, your coconut creamer? And I was like, is this coconut, coconut milk? And they were like, yes. And it had tons of sugar, tons of chemicals. I'm like, shame on you, Starbucks. This is not okay. So uh, here's a couple verses that I put up on the screen. Um, but Genesis 9, 3 says, everything that lives and moves about will be food for you. Just as I give you the green plants, now I now give you everything. So things that are natural is what I try to focus on. Um, okay, well, if you want to receive daily accountability and coaching in a private exclusive community, we have an inner circle that you can go into. If you'd like to join, please visit the Facebook group, um, Waste Away Inner Circle. And um, uh, Third John 2 says, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. So that's what I pray for you.
that you would have good health. And if you haven't read my book or listened to my audiobook, I really highly suggest that you do that. Um, listen to the audiobook every day. Those are the people that really get good results or get with one of our accountability coaches. Hope you guys have a great day. Thanks so much for joining us and see you next time. Thank you.